Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, folks, it's Thursday. I'm Fred McMurray. It's 2 p.m. Pacific, which means... We finally got applause. Yay! But this means that this show has to be, if I can hit the right button... And we're Ooh. back for another week, ladies. Yeah, another Friday Eve. Ah, uh, yes, Friday Eve. <laughs> Always the goal to get to that point. <laughs> Man. And, and while, while the music was playing, I was going on to our social media and liking and sharing our live stream. So if you are an audience member watching, please go on there and like and share and give us a comment or a question. Just thought I'd put that, that out there right off the bat. Yeah, because wait till you hear about our guest this week. Well, it's wait till you hear about word on the street. Like, this is the most exciting word on the street. I even had to warn Ray, who is all about eating, how much he was going to love word on the street this week. And he's yeah. sitting there giggling. You all can't see or hear him, but I can. He's so, giggling because we told him it was about food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Which is Ray's you, jam. <laughs> it is. All the women in his life have been cooking for him and serving him lunch. I, that doesn't happen at my house, I got to tell you. But hey, have you heard, Elizabeth, that you can have a subscription mm -hmm. to the first ever taco subscription at Taco Bell? Yeah. Genius, right? I mean, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like Columbia House when we used to order well back in the day. It was like cassettes, right? For and like three cents. CDs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And my mom would get all these bills and she'd be like, oh my God, who ordered all these CDs? And we're like, oh, we don't know. We forgot to send the back. <laughs> um, but this one is the Taco Lovers Pass. Now, here's what I want to know. So you can go for 30 days to enjoy their most iconic tacos, mm -hmm. one a day. Yep. So you must get a card or something because what would prevent someone like me or actually more like my son from going through the drive-through like two and three times? They, they stamp some something kind of on your <laughs> head. <laughs> they stamp something on your head, forehead. So that way it's right there. You always see it. You know, I, I imagine think. they have some kind of swipe card or something that says, you know, you've got your one, like they do at college dorms. You oh, get you so know. many swipes a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a buying pass that says here. And you, okay, so I think every restaurant now has an app. Oh, so yeah. you get a Taco Bell app on your phone and you purchase it right through the app and you redeem in restaurant. It says, yes, it's that easy. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of amazing isn't it and actually it's a it's a kind of a brilliant marketing strategy it's 10 bucks for the month for yeah. one taco a day but who is going to go buy one taco from taco bell well isn't that right. just the thing right the idea right? Is you're going to get a drink you're going to get your little nachos you're going to get more than one because one's not really enough that's <laughs> right so guess what where do they make all their money the margins are in the soda right? Mm -hmm. The soda that cost them three cents to pour and it costs you three fifty to buy anymore, yep. right? Like everything is, is going up, but what a great idea. I mean, I'm trying to think of what other restaurant, like I love Mexican food and no disrespect to Taco Bell, but I don't really consider that to be Mexican food. I think the next thing that would be really cool is if we started to get like free French fries or something like that, but what a great, what a great, great thing if you went in to get your nails done and you got a free lotion or you get a haircut and I don't know, Jerry, maybe you give them a free comb or something like that. Right. <laughs> well, and you know, what's interesting is um, for years now, my, my middle child has gotten for his birthday or for Christmas is a movie subscription oh. and he could for however much a month he can watch. I mean, three movies a week or something. It's, it's, it's more movies than you can physically watch 
<laughs> in a busy schedule. But when he does that, he he's a movie lover. And so he's bringing his friends oh, who, yeah. may, who don't have the movie pass. So well, that's going to be another way to get more people almost, you know, people who go to Taco Bell probably don't often go alone. I mean, drive through maybe, but you're going to have kids and you're going to have high schoolers who run by and bring all their friends with them. So, I mean, it's another way to get more people saying, hey, let's go to Taco Bell and use my pass. Well, what I think is interesting, and this really drives to a lot of models in franchising today is the whole membership right yeah. a lot of models today are using memberships as a way to have that recurring revenue so mm -hmm. hey hats off to taco bell i'm really curious to see how this how this goes for them i'm curious to see what their franchisees think so you know take us six months a year down the road i'd love to hear if this really helps lure people in do you see it increase their margins much i mean what, what can one little taco really cost right yeah, I mean, I think it's it's brilliant, and we we've seen it in in other guests who um like the float spa, True Rest Float Spa, they have yep. a membership model. A lot of the massage places have membership models. It's just it is surprising to put it into tacos, but you know I think it's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. So there you have it. Word on the street, people, go get your Taco Bell app and subscribe to the first ever taco subscription. Again, yes. way to go, Taco Bell. <laughs> Absolutely. And I before like we I sign off, off Curtison, um, I want to put out our number now because you're going to want to call in and ask some questions. But a big name WNBA legend coming on Ooh. the show today. We want you to be able to ask her questions. The number is 323-580-5755. 323-580-5755. And you can also comment on our website. So let us know what you want to know. Awesome. Hi, Ray. Hello. How are you? Did you? Is your mouth watering over tacos? My mouth is always watering. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> hungry. <laughs> yes, tacos. I love it. But uh, I, I think what's really exciting today I, is Jackie our guest. Williams, I'm just going to say. Yes, mm -hmm. please. Okay. Yeah, I, I think with. Uh, is really exciting today is our guest and that's uh, Jackie Style. So anybody who's been with knows anything about uh, you know college um, ball knows Jackie. And Jackie's athletic accomplishments are numerous and diverse, but she is known best for her endeavors in the basketball court. She is the all-time leading scorer in NCAA Division I basketball history with 3,393 points. She had a compelling competitive spirit and a stop on the dime quickness. Her career at MSU culminated in a 2001 NCAA tournament where she led the Lady Bears to a Final Four appearance. In the Sweet 16 game, she scored 41 points in a 81 to 71 shocker against top ranked Duke. Jackie remains the only woman to score more than 1000 points in a single season. In her college career, she procured a number of outstanding awards. But after her playing career, Jackie started with started J Styles Total Training, which provides personal training, private basketball instruction and motivational speaking and sports broadcasting. Welcome to the show, Jackie. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Hey, <laughs> I gotta tell you, things that were important to me and my, my boys tease me, right? Cause they're like, oh yeah, mom, you're gonna be WNBA. You must've been a draft pick. Okay, no, you were the draft pick, right? Fourth overall draft pick for the WNBA. Yes, I was, yeah, fourth pick. That is, wow. <laughs> So here's the thing. When I was reading your bio, I'm like, oh my God, she's got to be like six foot tall or something. And you're like five, eight. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing I feel about my story is I'm relatable. When I walk around, no one said to me, oh, you must play professional basketball because I blend right in. I'm actually <laughs> pretty small for the basketball world. Um, I remember they had to get my uh, basketball shoes when I was, pro when I played professionally from a separate division in Nike because they didn't have normally that small a shoe, you know, just because, really? yeah. So uh, I, I definitely don't fit, you know, the typical uh, mold of a professional basketball player. Well, I have to tell you, even though I'm taller than you and I played center, there is no way I could guard you because <laughs> I, 
not only am I clumsy, but I know you're way faster. You can score on me no matter what. And you were also rookie of the year. Yes, I was. It's hard to believe that was me. It feels like a separate <laughs> life now. And I don't even want to tell you how many years ago that was. It, it'll uh, age me for sure. But um, no, it was, I just had a, uh, you know, so many dreams come true in my, in my basketball career. And that was a credit to so many incredible people I was surrounded by. I mean, you cannot accomplish anything great unless you're surrounded by incredible people. And I share all those awards and honors with so many people that made that possible for my teammates, coaches, my family, you know, I was just blessed to have amazing people in my life that helped me, you know, achieve my basketball dreams. Well, you know, that is the perfect lead into my first question, which really was then, then obviously you did some personal training, but now you've gone into the franchise world. And I have to imagine, I mean, you're talking about this great support system. Is that what made you choose franchising instead of going off on your own to do your own thing as an entrepreneur separately? Yes, no, that's a great question. Definitely. I like the fact that the franchising gave me support and that structure because I'm somebody that I am creative and I have ideas but I get overwhelmed if it's just a blank sheet of paper. And so having that structure coming in was really exciting to me. And I come from a team sport and, right. you know, I, I just love building things together with great people. And so that's what really excited me about franchising. That's awesome. So tell us about the model that you chose. Yeah. So I picked next gen fitness and, you know, it's just a kind of a God thing, how all this different things lined up to, for me to get introduced to the franchise. It's a very uh, new franchise. It started in Texas, but um, I was living in Norm in Norman, Oklahoma at the time. And I got introduced to a guy that had a next gen there and he invited me to come work out. And he's like, you know, you would be perfect to be a franchise owner. And I just, I fell in love with the model. It really aligned with what I was about. And I I knew next gen fitness was what I wanted to do. And it's basically private personal training. And I feel like it's also a great model now with, um, you know, the COVID world, because it's one-on-one and you're getting the specific training for you. It's not like a group atmosphere. You're getting your nutrition, you're getting the cardio, you're getting the individualized workout to meet your goals and needs. That's awesome. So um, tell me what point of this franchise system are you in right now? Now you haven't yet opened, right? No. And, and the one thing about uh, COVID, it slowed us down a little bit. Um, yeah. I do have my location. Um, you know, I, I have my builder for my build out and it's not an extensive build out. Um, the one thing I hope is going to be on time is the equipment that's been, you know, holding me back a little bit. Um, but I'm hoping I can open the doors in April. I mean, that's, that's the goal. And then I would like to ideally get the one in Springfield, Missouri up and going. And I've also bought the rights to do one in Bentonville, Arkansas. So um, Ooh, right yeah. by university, <laughs> Arkansas. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited about that as well. Okay. Actually, wait a minute, Jerry, is that by university, of Arkansas? That's actually Walmart's territory in uh, yes. Bentonville, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to be careful because I get those towns confused down there. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. So I have to imagine now you Uh, because you were a coach, how do you think um, your coaching experience is going to help you lead um, your franchise teams? Because obviously you're not going to be able to be in three locations at one time. So how do you plan on uh, um, applying those skills that you learned as a basketball coach to franchising? Yeah, so I was very fortunate in my last um, coaching job. I was an assistant at um, Oklahoma And I got to coach under a Hall of Fame coach for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And what I learned in two years about leadership and just leading people, I mean, it was incredible. Just the timing of that, I've learned so much. And so I'm really excited to applying that to building the teams for my franchise. You know, I just... I, my, I look back and I was very selfishly focused. The first half of my career was all about how can I become the best basketball player I can possibly become now for me, I just want to, you know, I feel like our greatest legacy is every human life we can impact for the better. And so, you know, I'm just excited about, you know, teaching my manager who's teaching the trainers who then is teaching the clients and, you know, everybody's a leader of something, whether it's your kids, you know, even if you're not titled a leader. And so I'm just excited to have a positive impact on as many people as I can. And it just aligned with fitness because I am somebody that everybody knows. If you know me, 
I've got to get my workout in. And I was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in 2017. And I had to have this treatment where I was isolated and I brought my bike into my room and it became such a scene on my hospital floor. People like heard about it and they all had to come and see <laughs> if I really had a bike and oh exercise bike in, in my room while I was going through cancer treatment. But that's how impactful fitness has been for me. So I just felt like it really aligned. So, wow, that's amazing. I, now, you know, one of the nice things about what you're doing though, is you're able to apply your, 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 what you've learned in your career and apply it to a business. And uh, also you'll be teaching other people, you know, so you're taking all that you've learned and able, able to share it with other people. That's, fant that's a fantastic feeling. Well, thank you. And I have, I've got a lot to learn from all of you who've done it, you know, for so many years. So I'm just so excited to be around all of you and learn as much as I can as well. I think what's great is you're able to take your passion. You know, you just described this passion. I mean, how many people can say they're there fighting for their lives during a, you know, a cancer treatment and have to have their bike? I mean, if that's not an inspiration, I mean, I'm thinking I'm just going to lay in bed and relax. I can't even imagine right now even getting my bike out. Um, but I think that's amazing. And, you know, the great thing is you've got a platform. So when you talk about small business, you talk about franchising you know, um, everybody has to do marketing, right? And so you've got a great platform to work off. I think that would be a great, a great advantage to oh, yeah. you. Um, you know, the great thing is you've got a community around you, obviously becoming part of the fabric of the community. That's going to be really important for you. So I'm excited to see what you decide to do with that when you're there. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. That's why I picked Springfield because um, that's where I played my college ball at Missouri State. It used to be called Southwest Missouri State when I played. That's how old I was. You know, they, I am. They have, they have a. They've had a name change since I played there, but mm -hmm. the community has just supported me so much throughout. You know, my whole playing career, and then through my battle with cancer. I mean, they have just always uh, rallied around me. So that was a place that I wanted to give back, and you know, through my love of fitness, and so that's why it really aligned. And and I, I think for you to get anyone to do anything. And as far as leadership goes, you have to model it. So yes. I'm always big on, okay, if I expect you to do it, I'm not going to have you do anything that I haven't already done, you know? So I, I just think modeling is a big thing when you are trying to, um, you know, uh, teach people or lead people. So you have to model what you believe in. You know what? I absolutely love that. I feel the same way. You know, our business isn't glamorous, but I got to go clean toilets before I asked the girls to do it. Right. <laughs> you can do something a lot more fun than cleaning toilets, <laughs> but that's just the made business, right? Ray. I mean, it's what we have to do. <laughs> so have you found, you know, right now we're in an environment where it's really difficult to find help. Have you been able to find some good candidates out there to help you get your first your first location open to be honest that is the part that scares me the most is the hiring piece um uh -huh. and so i have not actually now i have my managers in mind um uh, but it's too little bit too early in the process to actually you know hire them officially mm -hmm. but yes getting like the trainers as you know as well as my managers that's definitely something that scares me just in this climate it seems like work is hard to come by but just knowing that sometimes people can fool you <laughs> in a job interview. And it is so yeah. critical for me to surround myself, but with really great people. I mean, that's what's so exciting about this is I get to pick who I'm surrounded by on a day-to-day -day basis, but I just don't want to make a mistake there because that's yeah. so important. So I don't know any tips that you all have on the hiring piece would be great. Well, we have a lot of those. And, and I know that we've shared some of that stuff with you when you can connect with all of us, because um, you know, David is, is in the middle of opening a franchise right now himself. And Jerry's always got hi hiring going on. And so, so do Ray and I, I mean, it's just really, we've always got stuff going on. So, you know, I think the one thing I would say is just always believe in the values you have and make sure that the people that you hire share the same values with you, because that's really, you know, you, you're putting everything into it and you want to make sure that that person can be as closely aligned with you as possible through this whole thing so and just knowing that it'll always work out it always does i mean 
I was talking to some of my managers the other day and they said, oh, we got too many clients and not enough people. And guess what? Somebody's going to call in and say, hey, they can't be clean today. And all those spots will always get filled. It, it, it always works out. And, yeah. you know, so just trust. <laughs> It'll okay. work out. Well, Ray, I need to talk to you daily. You just give me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll give you all our cell phone numbers and you just okay. call us up, each one on a different day, and uh, we'll help you out. Uh, looks like I've got a question from Fred. Is that you with a question? Yes. A Fred question. Ooh. Now, this is where Kristen really, she's nervous as all get out that I'm going to ask a real whopper. So my question is this. I have a four-year-old granddaughter that's the light of my life. What advice would you give to her about becoming a, a successful, good person? See, Kristen, it wasn't bad. Good. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, that... That's a great question, but uh, I would say, um, you know, first and for foremost, like, I mean, yeah, four, you might not clearly define what your values <laughs> are, but I, I just feel like right now, for me, I have my values and I always make my decisions based on my values. Um, I, I make sure they align. And, you know, after having my cancer diagnosis, you know, it, you just really get clear on, on what is important. So always just prioritizing people i mean if you can do that um you know you know one of my favorite quotes is if you want to be good focus on make yourself better but if you want to be great focus on not only making yourself better but those around you better and if you will have that um attitude of service and making people better it it will just it's just incredible how it enriches your life you know people think that you know oh well i'm giving giving no but you get so much back from when you have a heart of service so i would say that would be the biggest thing is just prioritize your relationships there's nothing more important than the people in your life oh my gosh i just want to give you a big hug that's awesome <laughs> oh. so you know obviously jackie you are somebody that is going to inspire a lot of young women um a lot of other people like yourself coming out of the wnba who are looking for that like next life right you go off to you play high school ball you play college ball you go and you play WNBA and then it's like, now what am I going to do? So, um, I mean, I think you have to be ready. P these women are going to come looking to you to say, Hey, what, what are you doing? How did you get there? Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of great stories to, to kind of tell about how this has worked for you. And I just have this really great feeling, all the things that you said, that you're going to do an amazing job. So, well, thank you so much. Do you feel like you're getting um, all that you anticipated from your franchisor in terms of the training and the support and things like that? Yes, and they've been tremendous. And it's kind of, it's been fun actually because they're a newer franchise. And so they've been yes. open to ideas too, you know, because I'm getting on in on the ground floor, which yeah. is exciting. And, and one thing I do know is I am surrounded by an incredible group of people with my awesome. franchise that's why I was like when I met them at yeah, headquarters I knew you know we really aligned um so and then even like for instance um my former boss who retired that's why I lost my job at Oklahoma but coach Sherry Cole who was a hall of fame coach for 25 years um and she's just such an incredible leader of people I said how are we going to not water down our brand when we you know just explode nationally yes. and so um, she became, I said, you've got to meet her. She's phenomenal. And so she became our culture creator. And so she's our culture coach, basically. So once a month, every, all the managers from all the franchises will get on a call where it's a safe space where you could say, hey, I'm, I'm struggling with this. You know, do you have any re recommendations or, you know, this has been working great for us. And then, you know, we just focus on one key aspect, whether, okay, one of them, one important thing is communication. And so maybe that month's call is talking all about communication and being a better communicator. So, um, you know, it's just really exciting to be a part of this franchise kind of in the early stages as well. That's awesome. I love a culture coach. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Jackie. Um, next Gen Fitness, right, is what, yes, is what you've got going on. Yep. I can't wait to see you come out my way because I, I'm not somebody who likes group fitness. So for a, a private training experience, I think it's amazing. 
And uh, I want to thank you so much for your time. And we really do hope to catch up with you on a regular basis so we can see how the journey is going for you. And obviously, Elizabeth, I'm sure will be following you around a lot as well. And um, if somebody wants to, to learn more about the journey that you're on with Next Gen Fitness, where's a good place for them to reach you? Yeah, um, so I just have a new website. It's up and running. It's JackieStyles.com. So you can reach me on there and you can learn more about Next Gen Fitness. I also do basketball camps and some speaking as well. So you can find me on there for sure. JackieStyles.com. Awesome. What a pleasure to meet you, Jackie. Thank you so much for your time and all the best of luck to you. Oh, thank you. I feel the same about all of you. You You're my people now. You got got to save your life, right? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Jackie. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Hey, franchise owners. How is local marketing? Do you feel like you could use some help keeping up with your social media posts and comments and reviews? Do you wonder if you could be doing more to attract local customers? Are you able to identify new movements to your local area? At Westvine, we help franchisees like you reach more local customers through digital marketing. With daily monitoring, creative content, and ad placement, and customer data intelligence, we'll get your business in front of the people who want your products or services. We also work with franchisors who need an agency to handle the digital marketing for all of their locations. If you're ready to reach more local customers, give us a call at 805-265-5440 or visit us at westbine.com. That's 805-265-5440 or westvine with a y dot com. So that was a great interview with Jackie. I um, was excited to interview her for the magazine. So in February, on February 1st, be sure that you are subscribed to the website so that you can subscribe to the magazine and read all about Jackie Styles as we um, get to know her and hopefully follow her journey. Um, if you have questions, our Million Dollar Mentor segments are coming up. Be sure to give us a call at 323-580-5755 or leave us a question on the chat on the website. Um, Up next, we have Jerry Akers talking about what's your story and what that means when you're looking for a franchise. Hey, Jerry. Are you on mute? (laughs) I pulled an Elizabeth, didn't I? That's okay, we caught her too. (laughs) <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. Thank you very much. I was I was thinking about Jackie Styles and everything she said. What a great interview. Oh my gosh. And I wasn't focused on us. I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. Yeah, she's probably by far one of my favorite interviews so far. I mean, just a great salt of the earth, pure, nice well, person. I, I drive through Springfield twice a month going back and forth to the lake. I am stopping to see her. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to email her when I'm done because I just want to stay connected. And that's a great story. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of stories, <laughs> live it to own it has been the story I've been reading. And I want to know, and our listeners want to know all about your story, Jerry. Well, that's great. Thank you, Kristen. You know, um, the, the purpose here is to talk about how much your personal story means as you're getting into franchising and moving forward, you know, and I'll just give a brief description of mine. So you get a little flavor, you know, my first foray into entrepreneurship was in an eight year old boy riding his bike on gravel roads in Iowa to collect enough points to get a baseball glove. So I had a new glove for baseball because I loved it. Okay. And uh, I have to tell you, Jerry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when I read that part in the book, I immediately envisioned my little brother doing the exact same thing. Now he didn't have to do that exactly. It was, we were more in town, but oh my gosh, but it just all came to this big flashback for me. It was such a sweet story. Well, and again, I talked about the artwork in the, in the book, but the artwork at the beginning of that chapter is literally a picture of a boy riding a bike on a gravel road with cornfields on both sides because it's a mile between houses. So Mm -hmm. if you want to sell, I think I had to sell a minimum of like 40 or 50 boxes of greeting cards to get enough points to get this glove that I wanted. I rode a lot of miles in a lot of hot, dusty weather to get that (laughs) done. But you know, that is, 
a critical part of my story and telling that story to a, a potential franchisor makes them understand just how deep your commitment is to something and how hard you'll work for and how far you'll go. And so in spite of the fact selling greeting cards or getting a baseball card or riding your bike had nothing to do with the first franchise I bought, that story resonated with the franchisor. And our listeners will have similar stories, right? Yeah, And absolutely. so they need to understand, you know, you know, and people say, I'm not a storyteller, I'm not a salesperson. If you've ever asked for a date, you're a salesperson, you're a storyteller. <laughs> it, you know, it, if you want to become part of a club, you're a, you're a storyteller, a salesperson, you know? So the, the bottom line is we all do it at some level. So what is your story and what should it include? You know, I think when you're telling a story in particular uh, to a franchisor as you move forward is where does your entrepreneurial story start? That's right. Whether it's as an eight-year-old riding your bike or something else, but there's something that got you into that. And they want to know that story because it will tell them a lot about you and how you fit into their franchise model. And, you know, the bottom line is, do they really want you as a right. part of their franchise? So where did it start? How did you get from point A to point B to point C? What was your progression? Did you move around the country looking for jobs? Did you continue to be promoted up a corporate stream? What did that look like? Because they can envision how a person like that would fit into their franchise model. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the whole why. Why do you want to be a franchisee? Why do you want to own your own business? Those kinds of things. Because, you know, every franchisor has different visions of what they want their franchisees to be driven by yeah. to see if it's going to be a good fit for the, for the team. So those are just some of the things. Then maybe you get into vision. You know, if you let me be a franchisee in this model, here's what I'd like to do with this business. Here's where I'd like to take it. Here's how many I'd like to have eventually. Some of those things. It'll sure. be great uh, for them to know it, but it'll also lead to some great conversations about what that looks like. And, you know, one last thing I would add to that story. Um, I believe that knowing where your heart is, if you have backed a uh, nonprofit in the past, if you've been a little league coach, some of those kinds of things, if you've given back to your community or other groups, those are things franchise, your, uh, franchisors are looking for because it's more than just about the dollar. It's more than just about the business. There's a, there's a broader scope to it. So don't leave anything out. I mean, you may not want to talk about your second cousin who's an underworld kingpin. Uh, you, you may not want to talk about any indiscretions you had when you were a teenager, but certainly anything related to business or your journey through life towards that business is kind of critical. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting when you uh, mentioned that and you're talking about um, the franchisor, you know, a couple of things for people to remember is that just because you have the money doesn't mean a franchisor is going to choose you. And, you know, we talk a lot in this process, this really is like, a match.com, right? It is like a marriage. You're not just because you have the money doesn't mean that you fit a certain brand. And I think that whether you're working directly with a franchisor or you're working with a broker or, or a consultant, you know, there's a lot of questions and a lot of stories to be told up front to make sure that that match is right. Because if you just go into it blind and you just want to cut a check and you just want to get going, there are a lot of stories out there that don't end well because that part of the due diligence and research hasn't been complete. Well, that's, that's right, Kristen. And those conversations, you know, those conversations, those stories, you need to, you need to understand your story so you can tell it because you're going to be telling it multiple times. You're going to be telling it perhaps to your spouse mm -hmm. to get them convinced that you should be a franchisee. Yep. You're going to be telling it to your banker who may have to back you to get this done. You're going to be telling it to the franchisor. Uh, right. Part of the franchisor process will be that you do validation by calling other franchisees. So you're going to be telling that story to two or three or four of those as you go through the process. When you're getting ready to open, there's going to be the Chamber of Commerce. There's going to be, you know, maybe local influencers that you want to tell your story to. And they really want to know, again, where your heart is, what you're going to do in the community, some of those kinds of things beyond just the dollars and cents. So once you have your story, and in fact, I'll be honest, this is not a pitch, but in my book, we actually give you tools to help you put your story together so that you understand where the pieces fit and what it needs to look like and how it will sound to somebody else. So 
a lot of things can go into that, but I would argue that everybody who's thinking about being a franchisee needs to understand their story. Absolutely. I think that's great. And you know what? One big thing that you that people can tell right away is if that story you tell is authentic. Absolutely. So. You know, um, and you guys can tell and the people that have listened to me before, this is where my heart is. This is where my passion is. Franchisees, right. franchisors, the franchise world. This is what I live for. Um, so, you know, people don't have any issues with me feeling whether I'm telling the truth or whether I'm passionate about my subject because I wear my heart on my sleeve. So it's it's a given when you talk to me about franchising. It's the real deal. Absolutely. And I have one piece of information for the franchise world today that many may not know. Are you ready? Could that be? Yes, I'm ready. The Supreme Court turned down the vaccine mandate for employers with over 100 employees. For anybody that has multiple employees, that literally may be the difference between staying in business and going out of business. So nobody, me included, has said anything about whether sh people should be vaccinated or not. I think right. most of us believe they should be vaccinated. It's just whether the government should put businesses in jeopardy by making the employers be responsible for that. And so that went away today and there's celebrations going on all over the country. Excellent. Thank you for that information, Jerry. And as always, we look forward to hearing yet another chapter from Live It to Own It. Sounds great. Thanks, Kristen. See you next week. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh. One last question. Is it a good time to buy a franchise? <laughs> Sorry, that was I'd the like old I'd like to know. <laughs> I'd like Is to know, Jerry. <laughs> you know, guys, <laughs> my story doesn't change much the, the bottom line is if you're looking to get into business for yourself you don't want to be by yourself and that's a little bit trite but mm -hmm. the bottom line is you want to have support this is an amazing time uh interest rates are likely going up yep. so making sure you got somebody that can help you with some financial decisions as you go through that process is something you only find in the franchise world so now is a phenomenal time to buy because you know, there's going to be more struggles coming up and it, it's much safer and more successful and more comfortable to be part of a franchise system as opposed to on yourself. So hallelujah. For, for Fred, thank you for the for the pitch. And there's the answer. <laughs> Have a good one, folks. Bye, Jerry. So thank you very much, Jerry Akers. Interesting and informative as always. Um, next week, we've got Shannon Swenson coming on. She is VP of Franchise Development for Dave's Hot Chicken. And I think we're playing with our screen a little bit, but we're just gonna go right along. Um, anyway, we're gonna learn about Dave's Hot Chicken and what that franchise system has to offer. Um, so tune in for that. Up next, we have David Kajanik, our another million dollar mentor who's journey in franchising with the joint we have been tracking in real time which is kind of fun and exciting because you get to see the ups and downs and ins and outs of the things that he's going to go through and what what kind of what works as well as it should have and what's a little unexpected in these weird times going forward so welcome david kajanik talk about weird times i saw his shoulders on your head yeah <laughs> we call that you know. creative <laughs> creative uh digital something or other i don't know hi david yeah i saw, I saw that i was wondering what was going on so I, I didn't know if i was supposed to move duck down i wasn't sure what what i was <laughs> well we're that's here what now. makes it fun that's what makes it yeah. fun hey so tell us now i noticed from the background that you're not back into the freezing cold yet so what's no, going no. on well first i'm gonna say you know really humbled by by Jackie's dedication to fitness. Yeah. I thought I was dedicated when I had my shoulder replaced and I in a sling went into the gym the next day because I figured I still have another arm and I have legs I can work out. <laughs> but, but but that's another level. So incredibly impressed with that. So and she's got a great story. That's yeah. she's gonna be very successful. And but again listening to her you could feel that little bit of anxiety that little bit of unease mm -hmm. even though she has all the qualities in the world to be extremely successful in her business and she's going to be she just doesn't know it yet yeah. and that's that and that's that unknown that every franchisee feels you know when when you're when right before you get going 
Oh, so. yeah. And, you know, I think the same goes when we had talked with um, Doug Plank before, too, right? I mean, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. who you are when you go into a new venture like this, even with a great support team, it's normal to be a little anxious, right? Absolutely. I mean, for a lot of us, when we did it, we put, if not everything on the line, a good chunk <laughs> of our of our livelihood on the line, right? So, so that that that's normal to have to have that feeling, and yeah. so you know, because there, there's people listening. This that are always going to be sitting on fence. Do I want to do this? I mean, but if you have the skill set and you have the confidence in yourself, and then the one thing I always say is my confidence I get from if somebody else can do it then I can do it, right? And she has absolutely 100% of the skills she needs to succeed in the business that she chose, which goes back to what you were mentioning with Jerry is finding the right fit. So real, con I, I mean, I'm, I would be shocked if, if, if her business wasn't at the, at the top of their chain in short order. I'd be shocked. Absolutely, absolutely. Be shocked. So for me, everything this is great I, I really love doing this because um it gives people real world stuff so yes. it's going to go back to a saying that i said a while ago no matter what you think if you're sitting here on the fence right now about opening up a business you've got a long journey ahead of you before you get open so you know you think about quitting what do i do do i put the money together all that type of thing yep here's where this sits Everything costs more than you think it's going to cost, and it's going to take longer than you think it's going to take. And for someone like me who has very little patience, that's something I had to learn all along the way. So, so this just came again today. We've been targeting March, beginning of March to open. We're probably looking at the end of March, beginning of April. Why? Well, everything that was explained before, we're trying to find contractors. You know, several of the mm -hmm. contractors we tried wouldn't even bid on the project because they were too busy. Yep. So now we have a bid, one bid back, which was nice. And we're going to continue. You want to get two to three bids to at least keep people honest. Mm -hmm. But what's happening in those bids is because of it's supply and demand and anything else and cost of goods are going up, those costs are increasing. So I budgeted a certain amount for construction. Yep. That budget, at least by the first bid that came in, I'm short about eight, ten thousand dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. so now I have to increase, increase my budget and my and my and my plan of expenses to open. Again, if you're novice and that comes as a check, you start going, "Oh my gosh, what did I get myself into?" And this is just the beginning. This is just the, <laughs> because because then you're going to say, "Okay, I had to order this equipment. They said it was going to cost this much, and it's costing fifteen thousand dollars more." But and I always say it's going to cost more than you think. So yes, don't get yourself in a bind where you're just skimping by and saying, I'm going to try it. Because if you get those unknowns, that's what causes the stress. That's right. Because now you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, I don't have enough money. And, and now you start off poorly. Right. And if you think about it, it sounds to me like Jackie's having some of the same problems, right? And she was mm -hmm. saying, oh, I hope we're going to open by April and I hope my equipment comes in. And I thought, oh, David, I know you're relating to her right now because she's in the same <laughs> same boat as you are. <laughs> what 100% because that was the other thing I had jotted down to make sure I talked about was, was the equipment delays. And right now they're telling us the right things. But when I remodeled my home, backsplash took nine months to get in. So when they said it would be in in three, right? So, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a little wary of everything that you're told. So there's equipment delays, there's the increased cost. So don't be afraid of it, but be, be prepared for it. What's the old saying? Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That's be prepared right. for it. Give yourself a chance to succeed right from the beginning. Get enough working capital, get enough in your loan. Make sure that. You, you know, you, somebody had told me, just take what you think it's going to be and add 10%. Well, you know, sometimes that works, sometimes it does. Sometimes I've never had it. I've, I've nailed every, all the costs, but this is different times right now. So what do you do in the meantime? You know, I had to pause the marketing. We want to make sure we get the signage going because, heck, get the signage up on the building as soon as possible. So you start to create that awareness. So that's, that's something you can do instead of just sitting down and going, oh, woe is me. This is going to take forever. And, yeah. and, and again, 
um, start interviewing for, in our case, it's a chiropractic. So interviewing the doctors, we had one interview today, we're going to interview another tomorrow. And um, so there's some things you can do to kind of, you know, instead of just having a complete dead period. Right. And Jackie's doing the same thing. I mean, she's, she said it best, I forget how she phrased it. But she's, it was about the managers interviewing them, but haven't finalized because it's a little bit too early for that. Or right. I forget how she said it. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where we are with some of our situations. We're talking topically. We hope we can hang on to them. But if, there's, if they're looking for absolute deadlines of when am I going to start, you just have to massage through that because we don't have that right now. Yeah. So those are some things. Hopefully it helps that, you know, if you go through this as a potential franchisee, you know, you wouldn't be alone. It happens to all of us. That's you just right. have to be a little bit of a little bit flexible. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm sure there are people out there right now today, as we just met Jackie, going through the exact same thing. So you heard David, you heard Jackie. You guys are not alone out there. Um, don't hesitate to reach out, David at pillarsoffranchising.com. If you have any questions or concerns, you guys can certainly talk one-on-one -on -one about it. And, uh, you know, all of us here at Pillars are, are here to help you get through those kind of tough times. David, thank you so much. We can't wait to hear the next update that you have for us. You got it. Take care. You too. Thanks. All right. Thanks, David, for that. I think it was an interesting thing to talk about to, to Jackie, who's in the very beginning stages of her first franchise ownership, and then David, who's an experienced seasoned franchisee. Um, and the similar yet different paths they're on and the way that they view it and the experiences that they've had. So I think that's really helpful to get that wide spectrum. Next up, we have Karen Kimsey Sward. She's going to be building on her topic from last week about building leadership. Um, so we can't wait to hear what she has to say. And then tune in next week for Sharon Swenson from Dave's Hot Chicken. And don't forget to get on our website and subscribe to our newsletter um, so that you can receive the magazine. And if you need some help getting the word out, um, we can also help you with some sponsorship opportunities. We've got some special deals going on right now. So feel free to reach out anytime. Awesome, thank you. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hey, how about the balmy weather in Chicago today? I know, how about it? Oh man. Minute how, to minute, how, doesn't it? The, uh, yeah, right, right. So tell us what's going on over there. So, you know, um, lots of conversations uh -huh. with leaders, with business owners, franchisees, um, franchisors about the people side of the business and about leadership. I mean, we're all, you know, even Jackie was talking about that. It's causing us a lot of angst right now yeah. with, and, and, you know, all the press about, you know, the great resignation, turnover, you know, not getting the right people. And it's just um, this whole people side of the business is really, I think, amped up. I think during COVID and even, you know, if we're even going to call this coming out of COVID, yeah. knows, right? And, and so one of the things that I talked about last week is I talked about how making sure, because we want to make sure we keep those good people, the high potentials, oh, yeah. leaders that are really good and, and making sure that we're focused on that. And sometimes I think many of us are focused on getting people in and make sure we keep those that are there and, uh -huh. and how, we can, how we can keep them. You know, that's a really good point. I was thinking about that today, actually. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's sometimes it's, it's what, what then can we do? So then, you know, Julia was talking about the stress. So it's like, okay, so what are some things that we can do? What are some practical things we can do? And I, last week we talked about just even having a conversation to say, hey, you're important to the high potential people. You're really good leaders. You're really important to us. And having, mm -hmm. call it a state conversation or engagement conversation about, what's important to them. It's not a one size fits all. So we talked about that last week. And I think it's great to have a conversation and then there's an and piece. So then after we have that conversation, it is actually making sure that it's not just, okay, check, check, we did the conversation, we move along. But how can we then really take something and say, let's talk about a couple of things that we can do. You know, sure. you know, sure that we're putting that in action because many times people, the reason why they leave, I know people talk about money, but mm -hmm. Sometimes it's feeling appreciated. They want to feel like they're growing in their jobs and it's their relationship with their manager. So it's yeah. make sure you're putting some, some growth opportunities in place that, that, uh, that, that helps with the whole having them stay. Absolutely. And sometimes that's giving them some, maybe just even small projects, right? So that they feel included in part of the, you know, whatever the new strategy is or whatever those new objectives might be, get them involved in that. 
Absolutely. Because they want to feel like they belong. And it's not like you have to give them a big promotion to do that. So many times it's like, hey, how about if you, you came along and you did this one stretch assignment or just give them a little bit more responsibility and then not just throw it at them and leave, but then also coach them. Yeah, Work absolutely. And bring them along. And I think that's, that's a wonderful thing. And I think the whole coaching piece is, you know, many of us are so busy. It's making sure, you know, I think Jackie was talking about like the culture piece and it's the same with, with us, you know, in our, in the franchises, it's making sure that we're coaching people, mentoring them, that we're taking time with them because the more they grow, the more we can do, and the more we can grow our organizations as well. That's awesome. I think that's a great tip of advice to give people out there today who are really looking to continue to move forward. And, and I, again, today I was just thinking about that, you know, we stay so focused on looking for new people. And I looked at my manager and I thought, you know, she probably really could use a little bit of extra for her. Right. Cause I keep talking to her about hiring new people, hiring new people. <laughs> yes. and, and, but yeah, I haven't talked to her about, Hey, so what is it that you need? I haven't talked to her about that in months, you know? So I'm sure she's, she's hungry for some additional knowledge and things as well. So absolutely. And that. even just, uh, even just uh, thank you. Oh, a, totally. So, yeah. You know, yeah. and, and a little feedback. And then when I say feedback, not negative or constructive feedback on what you can do, but here's what you do well. Because we absolutely all that because we're all we're all stressed still from everything that's going on. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate you taking time with us again today to give us some management tips. And we'll look forward to seeing what you have for us again next week. Absolutely. My pleasure. Excellent. And we want to thank our guests today, Jackie Styles from the WNBA, for coming on the show. Please be sure to like, share, and comment on this episode. And as always, we'd like to thank Ray Pillar, David Kajanik, Jerry Akers, our Million Dollar Mentors for their insight and wisdom. I'm Kristen Shalmetsi, your fourth Million Dollar Mentor, and together we are your resource for franchising success. We help you buy and grow your franchise to make your dreams a reality. And this has been Pillars of Franchising, and your dream starts here. Bill is a lie, 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 Bill is